You ever wonder why low carb diets, and especially the carnivore diet in particular, are really struggling to become mainstream? Hey there, NJRoot22.com here with another low carb keto carnivore check. And today it's a, a little something that I want to talk about. I hope I don't ramble on too much, but it's about why it takes people so long to become carnivore, um, regardless of what, what they have been prior. And it seems that the carnivore diet is, is uh, out of all the cases I've read, has been the final stop. There, there have been no successors to uh, the people that have chosen carnivore. Once they become carnivore, um, they stay carnivore because it is a solution for them. Now there's various uh, different kinds of carnivore diets out there. There's the hardcore carnivore, and this is all a rough understanding of mine because I, I, I have my own uh, way of dealing with carnivore. But the hardcore carnivore is like almost raw meat only, and that's it. Raw meat and water, usually a ground beef or steak, and, and people just eat that, that's it. Red meat and water, that's the hard, hard, hardcore carnivore, zero carb diet. And then there's the, the relaxed uh, carnivore, which is, uh, that's more like our diet, which is this animal-based. Um, it's uh, animal-based. It's meat, uh, eggs, and dairy. And uh, some people avoid the dairy because of their digestive issues, but I'm sure if they stuck with it long enough, dairy could be introduced. Uh, and that's not everybody, but um, a lot of people. But what I've been reading um, in all these uh, various sites that aren't censored or blocked or uh, subverted by some other mainstream interests is that you know these people like are either they start some diet either because they're uh, they're overweight, out of shape, in pain, have some sort of other issues, skin related, uh, sleep related, aches. Um, there's all sorts of issues people have um, with with their life that they they try a diet. And what I've seen a lot of people go through is they go, oh, I'm going to go vegan, right? They go vegan and they, their life gets worse. They become sick. They become disgusting. They gain weight. Uh, their hair, it's just a big mess. People who are vegan, I don't know how, how people do it, but from what I've been reading, vegan is just an awful, awful choice to make. And then they go, okay, I, I, this isn't working. I'm going to try paleo or keto. Um, now, they're both good diets, but I, I believe personally that they're, they're not sustainable long term. There's too many restrictions and, and so on. And, and that especially is true for something like the Atkins diet, which I, from my recollection, had the three phases. And phase one, everybody lost weight, and then they started reintroducing carbs in two and three, and then it didn't work. It never worked if you followed it. If you followed phase one, sure, maybe, maybe it works, but I don't know enough about the Atkins diet. I just knew that they, that was also another one of these things where they had supporting foods and points and all this nonsense. That just doesn't seem to work. It's too freaking complicated. And a lot of people uh, just went after doing keto and paleo with mild success but not, not overwhelming. They couldn't solve all their problems. They, they said, no, let me give keto, I mean, I'm sorry, carnivore a try for 30 days and all of a sudden it turned to 60, 90, and permanent. Um, and that seems to be a very, very uh, observable trend with, with these diets, that carnivore, once you get past the hump or, or, or the stigma behind it or the difficulty in the beginning of just having meat, and then you, after those 30 days, you, uh, you're you like, man, this is easy. I don't think about food. I don't care. I feel great. I'm losing weight. I'm, I'm energetic. My woes are going away. But I just find it interesting how it's it's this carnivore seems to be the end of the line for a lot of people instead of the first thing they're trying. And part of this video, what I want to uh, express is that I think a lot of it has to do with the marketing and the money behind a particular movement. Um, there is there's no real benefactors to the carnivore. Uh, lifestyle other than the meat industry, I guess. Uh, if you had to think of one, one, you know, 
beneficiary of, of the carnivore diet is the meat industry. And there's not really even one kind of meat industry either because you have crappy meat, the worst possible meat, like those Topps frozen burgers or McDonald's burgers or that meat is just crappy. I mean, there's a lot of disparity between the meats. And then there's the organic, on the other end of the spectrum, you got the organic grass-fed free-range uh, meats, which are exorbitantly expensive, um, very expensive. And then there's like the middle of the road meat, which I guess covers 80% of the spectrum. Um, but it, there's really no beneficiary. Like the keto and paleo, they have all this marketing behind it and, and groups and, and there's brands. And I, I don't know, it, it just seems to be there's something more more money in the pie there for to keep people in the keto or paleo. Man, Smirnoff spiked sparkling seltzer is still the number one drink. Anyway, you should do a little digging yourself to wonder why. Go on this website. It's called Ketogenic Endurance, I think. Uh, if I can remember, I'll put the link uh, in, in the video description. Every single person being interviewed has, it says the same thing. I did this, I did that, and here I am at Carnivore and awesome. And it doesn't even have to include exercise or any kind of like fanatical um, lifestyle changes you know your eating becomes secondary and I've said this in several videos before about food is fuel it shouldn't be entertainment it shouldn't be in, I mean it's not bad to enjoy your food and your meals and make a make a make a kind of life out of it but it's not really necessary either and, and it shouldn't be a requirement for, for anybody to oh I have to have all this perfect food I mean, wouldn't it be better if you could, let's say you ate for two hours a day, or, or maybe even more if you include preparation. Uh, say if like a 20% of your day is involved around, uh, revolved around eating. What happens, you, what happens if you can make that 2% of your day is involved with eating? And you could do other things with your time. I mean, you know, that's the, like, I don't know, maybe it's the same difference between just spending three minutes at the gas station, filling up your car and driving off, or an hour at a at our like electric car station it, it just seems it's like you're it's a waste of time to spend too much time fueling your body and and that's a topic that's easily debatable uh, someone can come around and, and tell me oh well what's wrong with it or what's the harm yeah that that's fine do whatever you want with your time but i think humans in in this society could be more productive if they, they spent less time eating and of course there's a flip side to this uh, equation as well if you spend less time eating you might have even more time to do more stupid stuff like sit around on the couch and watch TV instead of building or creating or learning something or hustling for extra money um, it there's there's flip side to every uh, kind of uh, situation flip side to the coins as they say but think about it if you can about why keep a carnivore, like just a really, really, really low carb, not complicated diet, seems to be the end of the line. It's like the last thing people discover. And uh, in 2019, 2020, I, I believe a lot of people are gonna understand the carnivore a little bit more and may try it uh, higher in the, in, the, in the food chain, <laughs> pecking order, than some of these other more popular, trendy, you know, diets that celebrities are talking about on TV and reading in stupid magazines and so on. But I don't know, that's it. It's, it's just a fascinating, like how it became the, the hardest thing to find and, at, and you had to go through the jungle to get to the clearing, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's it. I, I think uh, there's something to be discovered in this whole subject. And I think it's worth uh, investigating and talking to other people about. I, I can never really finish a video. I, I think, because I do all of this top of my head. I have no script. I have one sentence that says carnivore, keto, paleo. That's, that's all I'm working on. Um, but it, I think it, it's, 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 <laughs> it's hard because people have these long, long-term traditions and rituals that they've, they've gotten into, like the three meals a day or 
three meals and two snacks or breakfast is the most important meal and, and all these things that people have been you know almost I, I would like to say cursed with because it's not true I don't eat breakfast ever anymore on a rare occasion when I'm really busting my butt uh, for several days in a row I may actually be genuinely hungry in the morning and may eat eggs when I make food for my kids I also uh, I may pick at it and I, I try not to eat any solid food at all until because I like to keep a window like a four to you know six hour window of where I can eat and then the rest of the time I'm not I'm not eating because that's good for for ketosis and it's just good in general to to feed off your your excess I still have 20 solid pounds of excess body fat to lose and it, I'm giving myself about a year about a maybe a pound and a half a month will slowly come off before I really hit the gym and, and pack on the uh, the muscle again but anyway I'm rambling just look into why carnivore seems to be the last stop for a lot of people not only in their lifestyle choices but in their discovery of lifestyle choices right I mean I should add one last quick thing here like a lot of people discovered carnivore after uh, listening to the Joe Rogan podcast uh, or video vlog uh, so that that was really helpful for the carnivore movement um, and it that I, I, I have like really no opinion good or bad about Joe Rogan and some people have really negative opinions I mean because you can never agree with anybody 100% of the time I mean there's people I really like actors for instance or musicians that I don't agree with their political positions it doesn't change I'm not gonna allow that to change how I feel about their creative works because that's really a different it's a different thing like I'm not gonna get into who and what but but I I've learned how to kind of get over it if I like what they if I like the product they put forward I'm, I'm gonna sort of ignore what they do personally but anyway that's it I've rambled but uh, why is carnivore so far at the end of the line. Have a good week ahead.